The sophomore slump? Jonathan Taylor doesn't know what that is. In his second season of the NFL, he's continuing to carve through defenses and bulldoze his way to the end zone, racking up 1,100 rushing yards and 13 touchdowns as of only week 11. He's currently leading the league in rushing yards, and with the fact that Derrick Henry will be out for the remainder of the season, he'll most likely be the rushing leader by the end of the year. Many thought that Taylor would see some regression after his impressive finish last year with 650 rushing yards in his final five games, but he has come into his second season just as hot as he finished in his rookie year. Heck, he just had five total touchdowns against the Bills last week. Oh, honey. Oh. Why he stands out is his decision making. He takes what the defense gives him and does not hesitate to shoot the gap that was created for him. He also has great speed and amazing strength to shed tackles and make defenders miss like no other. We are going to break down what run plays the Colts use most effectively with Taylor and how his run skills make him a lethal threat to any defense. Let's first talk about the outside zone, a zone read run scheme that has become one of the most popular plays in the recent years. This has shifted away from design gap run schemes like power and counter, and when watching on TV from the sideline view, it can be difficult for viewers to identify when a zone read run is occurring. So let's take it from the end zone view where you can clearly identify how the offensive linemen block for zone reads. Here against the Titans, the Colts come out in 11 personnel, with strong side on the left. They will be running an outside zone to the weak side, opposite the strong, to create favorable blocks for the linemen and catch Tennessee outmatched. Philosophically, zone blocking is built upon the idea that every offensive lineman is responsible for an area rather than an individual defender. If the lineman is covered or a defender is lined up in their area, the blocker will step towards the play side and block that defender. If a lineman is not covered or there isn't a defender in his area of responsibility, then the blocker will step towards the play and work to create a double team on the first defender they come into contact with along the line of scrimmage. Once this defender is controlled, one of the blockers will climb to the second level. Here, since the play side is to the right, center Ryan Kelly does not need to worry about the defender lined up in front of him since he knows the right guard will step into the zone to take his man, leaving him to go to the second level. The running back's role is to make a decision and cut to where the offensive lineman has the best leverage. There are three cuts and reads a running back can make, beginning from the outside working in. Bounce, bang, and bend. Jonathan Taylor's first read is the bounce, and it clearly is the most favorable since his linemen have already reached the second level and have clear leverage towards that lane. The bang could be an option since Ryan Kelly is already in line to make a block, but Quentin Nelson's leverage is towards the outside, and Harold Landry has the ability to get off the block and stuff Taylor in that lane. With Taylor taking the bounce and his lineman already in the second level, he's able to shoot through the gap without hesitation and with his speed, make a huge gain on the play. Here against the Jags, the Colts come out in 11 personnel set strong to the right side where the tight end Jack Doyle is lined up. The Jags have eight men in the box and are playing heavy to the strong side since a run play to the right is likely in this circumstance. This time the Colts do run to the strong side and the key thing to watch here is left tackle Eric Fisher who performs a technique called a hinge block to step into the play side and block the defender to the outside while also moving forward. This creates space for a bend read for Taylor, which is the best read when he receives the ball since the Jags flowed heavy to the right side, blocking the bounce read and clogging the bang read. Taylor cuts back to the bend and with his speed, he makes subtle cuts to have defenders miss and is able to get a 20 yard gain on the play. The great thing about Jonathan Taylor is he's not just a downfield rusher. He doesn't need to pick up speed when starting 70 yards back when the QB is under center. He excels when plays run from the shotgun or under center, either which way. His average yards per attempt are practically the same at over 5.5 yards per attempt, and his ability to break tackles is among the best in the league. This leaves a defense in difficult spots because they will have to protect run plays in either situation due to the threat he brings. When running from shotgun, the Colts like to run either inside zone or a design gap run to create a lane for Taylor. Here against the Niners, the Colts come out in 12 personnel with the strong side on the left, and they will be creating two major lanes in the B and C gaps for Taylor by double teaming both interior defensive linemen on the play. When Taylor receives the handoff, you can see the lanes have already been created, three in total, but the Niners linebackers are ready to fill those gaps. However, you can see that Jack Doyle pulled and is preparing to make his chip on linebacker Marcel Harris. The true intention of this play is to flow to the right and bring the linebackers into their assigned gaps and cut back to where the pulling blocker is filling. This is where Taylor really impressed me. This swift cut to make Harris miss his tackle and then immediately jab again and make another defender miss is something truly special to watch. The offensive line can do their job and make a hole for the running back, but it's what the running back does with the lane that can separate them from the rest of the pack. And do not get me wrong, the Colts offensive line is among the best in the league. 
I love this play later in the game on an inside zone where right guard Chris Reed completely blindsides friend Warner who thought he had a free lane at Taylor. This creates massive space in the second level for Taylor to run for a massive gain and started by that amazing block. When playing against the zone read offense, the defense may often set heavy to the strong side and leave their speed edge rusher on the weak side to come around for a backside tackle. On outside zone run plays, the weak side tackle will sometimes block towards the play side and move with the line and leave the edge defender unblocked in order to help the front side lineman get off their block and towards the second level. This then will force the running back to choose between the bounce or the bang, since they cannot cut back to the bend due to the edge rusher coming in cleanly. If the defense fills their gaps and the offensive line fails to reach the second level, this can often result in a negative play like here against the Ravens. To offset that, the offense can run a split zone run play, where a tight end will perform what is called a flash block to set the edge and allow the running back the option of taking the bend cut. Here against the Niners, the Colts run an inside zone split concept, where the interior offensive lineman will create double teams on the tackles designed to create gaps for Taylor. Jack Doyle will be performing the flash block on defensive end Nick Bosa, and with this flash block, Taylor is able to determine which read he wants, without the threat of Bosa coming from behind him. Al Shire is coming through and filling the B gap, so Taylor cuts to the outside design C gap. And if you see on the left side of the screen, receiver Michael Pittman is coming in to pick up a block in the second level, to create even more room for Taylor to go through. It is great when you see receivers buying into the run game and making the effort to block and allow for even bigger run gains on a play. The Colts run game involves everyone, from the linemen, to the tight ends, to the wide receivers. They all commit to blocking at their best potential, and it leads to some great plays from Jonathan Taylor. Like any good run game, the Colts like to pull blockers to often create lead blockers into the design gaps, even their tight ends. Let them boys cook out here. here again with Jack Doyle, he'll pull towards the inside, through the design gap. 54 is meant to fill this gap, and can make a tackle on Taylor. But with Doyle pulling, he can create a lead block for Taylor to pick up even more yards than expected on the play. Another great blocking scheme that involves pulling a blocker is called Wham, and some of Taylor's biggest run plays come as a result of it. The Wham involves the center ignoring his block on the defensive tackle, effectively giving him a free lane at the running back, only for a tight end to pull and Wham into him from the side and create an inside leverage for the running back to run through. Here against the Niners, the Wham is set up by center Ryan Kelly, ignoring DJ Jones and moving up to block in the second level, with tight end Mo Alley Cox pulling in for the Wham block. Both guards will establish inside leverage on their blocks to create a hole through the middle for Jonathan Taylor as well. As the play begins, you can see Jones hesitate when Kelly runs right past him. Defensive tackles know the concept of Wham play as well, and if they get by the center that easily, they know a Wham is sure to follow. But Mo Alley Cox makes a great block on Jones to secure the gap, and the real show of this play is Jonathan Taylor, breaking two tackles and hitting the gaps he sees, using his speed and strength to blow past defenders parallel with him. If there was a play to describe why Jonathan Taylor is the leading rusher in the league, it would be this play. All around great performance from the offensive line, and especially great plays by Jonathan Taylor. There are even times when the Colts can use their pulling blocker to trick defenses and disguise their play. Here against the Ravens, Quentin Nelson will pull to the strong side of the offense. This can often be seen as a play called power, where the play flows to the strong side and the backside puller is used as a lead blocker for the running back. However, here it is used as a feint, since when the lineman pulls, the linebackers are taught to key onto that and assume there is run play going to the side where he is pulling. Look at how the first half second of this play begins. The entire offensive line is flowing to the right, but with Quentin Nelson pulling, the linebackers take their first step to the left. This is a great play design since the run play is a toss and in most toss run plays, the play can be broken up by the linebackers in the second level, outpacing the linemen and meeting the running back in the open field. But with Nelson pulling, and effectively taking both linebackers out of the play, Taylor is easily able to outpace the edge rusher and clear the corner for a big gain and pick up a first down. When you have an elite rusher like Jonathan Taylor, it leaves the potential for play action passes all the more fruitful. When you have the threat of a run play that can break off for a huge gain, whether it is from shotgun or under center, you're going to make it difficult for the defensive linebackers to play the run. This is the perfect opportunity to call play action when the linebackers are out of position. Like here against the Ravens, the formation the Colts are in can easily be an outside zone to the right like we were previously watching. But on this play action, look at how far up the linebackers commit before realizing it's a pass play. It's great technique by Carson Wentz to fake out the linebackers, and with him rolling out left, that leaves the linebackers out of position and the intermediate throw wide open for the receivers. The Colts even use the play action screen to keep Jonathan Taylor in the play and allow him to be where he's most deadly, the open field. 
Here against the Jets, they run the play action, and after the initial bite of the linebackers, they fall back into their zones, exactly what the Colts want them to do. This then leaves ample space for the offensive lineman to break out, allowing him to use the skill set and make defenders miss, resulting in a large gain, something that we continually see throughout the season. The threat the Colts bring with the play action, whether it is a screen or regular pass, keeps the defense guessing and continues to play it to their advantage. The defense has to think, is it actually a run play, is it a pass play, or is it a screen? The hesitation a defense brings is something that can directly result in the outcome of the play, and the Colts continue to throw different obstacles at them each game. Jonathan Taylor is a man who can do it all. He can pick up blocks, he can go out for passes, and most importantly, he can run the rock. His ability to make defenders miss is not only his swiftness, but also the strength he possesses. It takes immense strength to perform the cuts he makes at his speed, and to keep his speed up to allow defenders not to catch him. He is also a great runner, who knows which hole is the right one to hit, and without hesitation. He proved himself at Wisconsin, breaking many school records, and I knew he would make an impact in the NFL. His sophomore season is continuing to show the league that he is a force to be reckoned with, without any intention of slowing down. I appreciate everyone who watched this video to the end. I have a few more videos coming out shortly, one discussing Mac Jones and his rookie season, and another involved in discussing Kyle Shanahan's offensive scheme. Be sure to look out for those in the coming week.